what's going on everybody it's your guy realistic and i'm doing another tutorial for soundoracle.net and in this video i'm going to be going over some of my favorite quick commands inside of pro tools but first if you're not already be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel that way you can catch the latest tutorials that we do and also you can interact with the polls that we have that let you choose what type of content and videos you want to see on this channel and also oracle and i have a brand new online mixing course out called the art of beat mixing i'll put the link in the description below but it's hours worth of mixing content and tips and techniques and there's also some pdfs in there as well for you to be able to follow along all right so let's get into today's topic and that's quick commands inside of pro tools now i chose pro tools for two reasons one it's because it's the daw that i use the most and the one that i'm most familiar with and two if you're a producer or engineer even if you use another daw if you're planning on getting into more commercial studios and working with bigger artists and you want to be able to record them in bigger studios chances are you're going to run into pro tools now i know that there's going to be somebody in the comments that lets me know about some random studio in nowheresville missouri that uses cubase or logic but that's the exception most of the time when you're in a bigger commercial studio you're going to run into pro tools and so it might be useful to know your way around it a little bit or at least know how to use some of the quick commands because no the quick commands can speed up your time in the DAW and if you can save your clients time they're probably going to book you again but with that being said if there's a demand for a video like this for logic ableton or reason quick commands if there's a big enough demand just let me know in the comment section and we can do a video on that as far as fl i don't have any personal experience inside of that daw myself so i would recommend going over to busy works beats youtube page and if he hasn't done a video on that already just hit him up and ask him and i'm sure that he will also larry o on instagram is another fl guru so check those two out if you're looking for FL tips. So in this video, I'm going to be going over some of my favorite quick commands in Pro Tools, the ones that save me the most time. I'm not going to be doing the, the basic rudimentary quick commands but if you're if you're a beginner and you're looking for a video like that let me know in the comment section and i could do one like that in the future but i'm not going to be touching on today the ones for like zoom and record and toggling between the mix and edit window and then also i'm going to be doing this on a mac computer but i do have my some notes here for how to do this in windows so if you see me looking at my notes here it's because i'm looking to see what the quick command is in windows that way i can also help out the windows users for this tip as well so let's go ahead and dive in and i'll show you what some of my favorite are here so the first one here is we all know about clip gain here being able to change your clip gain up and down but how do we change the clip gain all at once well what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and we'll highlight all the channels together and then on the keyboard what we're going to do is we're going to hold down shift and control and then we're going to scroll down with our mouse wheel and then you see all of them are going to be going up and down by increments of 0.5 so just a little something to save time and then also if you don't want to scroll on your mouse wheel you can hold down shift control and then up and down arrow will do the same thing but the mouse wheel kind of lets you go really crazy with that now, as far as Windows, the quick command for this would be start, shift, scroll on your mouse wheel or start, shift, up and down arrow. All right, so then another tip here is we know in Pro Tools that when you record or when you, you know, make a lot of clips and stuff like this, that over time, this little window over here can start to pile up with a bunch of useless audio and stuff or unused audio, I should say, not useless. But a lot of times that can start to take up a lot of time, space in your hard drive so if you want to remove all the unused clips and that would be any clip that's not inside this actual edit window here if you want to remove any of that all you do is you hit command shift u and you see it's going to highlight a bunch of clips here and that's all your unused audio clips and so what you can do there is after you hit command shift u you can hit command shift B and what that will do is it will give you the option to delete all of those unused audio clips. So if you go ahead and then just select that, hit yes to all, 
it will delete all of those audio clips that are unused and that can save a lot of time and space in your hard drive. All right, so on Windows, how you would do that is you're just gonna hit Control Shift U to select the unused clips and then Control Shift B to delete the unused clips. Now, usually what I do when I do this right here, this is gonna be more towards the end when I want to archive the session. I probably won't do this during the recording session or I probably won't do this during the mix just in case there is an unused clip somewhere that the artist wanted me to go back and use and I gotta find that take or something. I don't wanna just delete it permanently because this is gonna delete it permanently. However, when I go to archive this, I don't want it to be eating up a bunch of space on my hard drive. All right, and speaking of saving space on your hard drive, I got a little bit of a destructive tip that you wanna be careful because when you do this one, you can't undo it. But while you're recording, if you hit command period or control period on a Windows, what it's gonna do is it's gonna instantly delete that take and never write it to the hard drive so it's gonna save space. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that that's a take that you don't wanna use. It's usually for like if there was like you hit record and there was an accident in it, or you hit record and the artist is like, ah, my bad, I wasn't focused. Just hit that command period or control period on the keyboard and it will delete it instantly, but you gotta do it while it's recording. But like I said, you gotta be careful with that one because you don't wanna get in the habit of always doing that because what if it's a good take and you hit that? It's gonna delete and you can't ever get that take back. But it can help if you know for sure that you're not gonna wanna use that take. All right, now, I'm gonna get into one of my most used ones and that's being able to commit a track and that's option shift C. And what that will do is it will allow you to commit a track. So let's say you got like a bunch of plugins and stuff right on your channel here and you wanna commit it. Or what I use it the most for is if this is a MIDI channel, I wanna commit it to audio. You just hit option shift C and it will give you the option to commit the track right in place with all of this insert information uh, rendered to the channel. And then you can choose other things that if you want it to also render the pan and the volume. Now, as far as a Windows, you wanna hit Alt-Shift-C. Now, going on to a very similar quick command, if you wanna duplicate the same track, you wanna hit Option-Shift-D or Alt shift D on a Windows and this will allow you to duplicate the track but what you can do too is you can choose what you want it to duplicate so let's say you don't want the inserts to duplicate but you just want the audio track to we'll just select that and then hit OK and now you have a duplicate of that channel here without the plugins or you can duplicate it with the plugins if you want to now here's one that you might know and it's consolidate tracks or join the track so let's say you got like a bunch of pieces chopped up here and you want to combine all these clips together right so all you got to do is just select the area that you want to consolidate and then you just hit option shift three and you see that's going to turn that into one track now if you're on a windows you're going to hit alt shift three and that will turn that into one track there also just a little bonus one if you're wondering how i split these clips here all i did was i highlighted the area i wanted to split and i hit command e and that will separate the clip now if you want to heal those back together like get those back together that you sliced up, just hit Command H and that will heal those back together. Now, as far as Windows here, let me look what I got on my notes here. It's Control H if you wanna be able to do that. So Control E on a Windows to separate a clip and then Control H to heal the clip back together. All right, here's a tip that I think actually works in a lot of different softwares, but it's a tip that can save a little time. So you know when you go to close out of a window here and it gives you these options for don't save, save, and all that. But if you hit the first letter of the choice here, it's gonna do that. So if you hit S on the keyboard, it's gonna save and close. If you hit D on the keyboard, it's gonna not save and close. So let's go ahead and hit save. And you see right there, it, it just closed and saved. And all I did was I hit S right there. So I'll, I'll just a little tip to save time. I, I know that also works in programs like Photoshop as well. So I think that one works across a lot of different softwares. So if you're one of the few crazy people like myself that actually makes beats inside of Pro Tools here, and no, it's a, it's a little crazy to make beats. And, and I know the other DAWs, it's a lot easier and it's probably more efficient to make them in there. But if you're like me, 
and you're a little crazy and you do that. If you want to know how to pull up your quantize window, all you got to do is hit option zero on your keyboard here. And you want to make sure it's zero on the numpad, not zero on your actual top of the keyboard there. But that will pull up your quantize window. And then you'll also have other options too, like velocity and transpose in there. But it's pretty easy if you just hit that. And then on a Windows, it would be alt zero and it will pull up that quantize window. All right, so now we got uh, in Pro Tools, we got different types of modes up here. You see, we got grid, we got slip, spot, and shuffle. So grid, what it's going to do is wherever we click, it's going to go to that nearest bar. Or if we got it set to like, you know, quarter notes, it's going to go to the nearest quarter notes. Now, when we're on slip here, we'll be able to go anywhere, right? And then uh, shuffle here, it's going to just uh, move files here to the next edge of whatever clip it is really convenient when you're trying to delete big sections and stuff. So then we have spot and what spot will do is if we have a, a file in here that's uh, that's off from all the original place that it was at, like if you accidentally move this or something, it will allow you to use the uh, original timestamp here of where it was located and then it will put it back to that original location. Now as far as the quick commands though, you can use some quick commands to toggle between them and I use this one pretty regularly. So option one on the top of your keyboard is going to give you shuffle, option two is going to give you slip. Option three is going to give you a spot and option four is going to give you grid mode right now on a windows. It's going to be those same numbers, but it's going to be alt one through four instead of option. And this one saves me a lot of time, especially the ones I toggle between the most are slip and grid and to just be able to toggle between those back and forth pretty easily is, is definitely a time saver for me. All right, so next we have creating a new track. Most of us know that one, it's just command shift N, right? So that's not the, the true tip that I'm trying to give you here. It's being able to toggle between these options here. So. If we go ahead and we hold down command and then we hit the arrow buttons, it's going to allow us to choose which uh, type of track that we want, whether we want it to be an instrument or a MIDI or a master fader or an audio track. And then same thing, if we continue to hold down command, it's going to allow us to choose between stereo or mono for the tracks here. Now, as far as windows, instead of command, you're going to hit control. Now, check this out. If you go Go ahead and you hit hold down command and then you add shift to it and then hit the down arrow buttons here you're going to be able to create more tracks so it's just something that allows you to save some time so let's say we're in a scenario where we want to create a couple audio tracks here and we want to have some stereo aux tracks like maybe three of those we know that we're going to want some stereo instruments here and then let's say that we want a stereo master fader right here it just be, allows us to be able to do all that and now we have all of that created right there so pretty easy to do and saves a lot of time. All right, now my next thing right here is a little thing here in Pro Tools called Tab to Transient. Now you wanna make sure that this is selected up here. And then what it allows you to do is if you hit the tab button on your keyboard here, it's gonna go up to the nearest transient. So see I'm here, and then when I hit that, let me blow this up a little bit. By the way, to make this bigger, all I had to do was I just hit Option Command and then the brackets. So normally when we zoom, we just hit Command Brackets. But if we throw Option into that command there, it'll allow us to adjust the heights. Now as far as Windows, it would be Control Alt Brackets to change the height. But Anyways, back to the tip here that I'm given. Uh, to, if you hit tab, it's going to go up to the nearest transient here. And it's really convenient because let's say that we have, especially like your drum editing or something like that, it's it's pretty easy. All you got to do is just, you know, hit tab and then you can move it right onto the grid here. That's what's really nice about that. And so just again, something that can save time. See, I can just fly right through that right there. So my next one here is going to be focused on our outputs or our inputs or our buses. And it's just going to be able to assign all the tracks at the same time here. So what you do here is you highlight all the tracks. And then what you want to do is you want to hold down shift 
Option, or if you're on a Windows, you're going to hit Shift Alt, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to click one of the outputs or the inputs or send or whatever it is. And what you're going to do is you're going to choose what you want the output to be, and you see that it will assign this all to the same output right there. So just something to save a little time. So in the in the same lane, if you don't want to assign them all, if you want to set if you want to assign them to consecutive numbers, what you can do is you add command to the combination here. And so it would be shift command option or shift control option if you're in a Windows. And so pay attention to what this is going to do right here. We'll go ahead and we'll select the buses here. And you see what it did is it went in consecutive order. So we got bus 21, 22 to 23, 24, 25, 26. And it just continues that rotation right there. Now in the same lane here, kind of, let's say that we want to send a separate headphone mix to our artist, right? And we got all different types of, of levels here, you know, in our, our mix like you normally would. So let's go ahead and, and change some of those real quick. So it, it's kind of, you know, different like a mix would be and so let's say we're going to send this we want to send a, a headphone mix here to an artist well when you throw up your sense here it's going to already be at zero but that doesn't reflect of what this is going to be in the uh, actual se session here so you could send a big blast of sound to your artist so what you want to do here is you want to hit option command h and what that will allow you to do is copy this information to the send fader so right now we're at zero and if i go ahead and hit OK, you see that that's going to bump that down to match the tracks here. And then you can see here all these channels right here. It will match the volume of the track there. Now, as far as a Windows, it's going to be Alt Control H. All right. And then let's pull that back up, though, because one thing that you want to pay attention to here is what send it is. So right now this was on send A. So you just want to make sure that this matches and then you can choose to if you want to also copy the automation and the panning and the muting. So it's just really convenient, especially if you just want to send something to the artist on the fly there. I'll give you another little simple one here. If you hit command M or control M on a Windows, it will mute the clip that way. If you want to just mute something for a moment or or just kind of, you know, save it for later. See, so hit play, it's not in there, but if I unmute it. So another little simple one right there to use. All right, and now the last tip here that I'm gonna show you is one of my favorite ones that I used a lot. So let me go ahead and put some plugins on in here. And so let's say you wanna kinda A-B what it sounded like before or after you put plugins on, or you just kinda wanna be able to, to hear it without the plugins. If you go ahead and you hit Control and then click on the top plugin, it's gonna bypass all of them, or if you're on a Windows, you're gonna hit Start and click on them and it's going to be whatever one you click on and then all the ones below it so let's say you just want to do you know the everything below this you just go ahead and click that now if you add option to the quick command control here right it's going to mute everything inside of the session so that can also be pretty convenient if you just want to hear it without all the plugins and also on a on a windows that would be alt start click if you want to do that so those are my favorite quick commands like i said before if you do want to see one of these videos on logic ableton or reason let me know if you need it on fl go to larry o's instagram or busy works beats youtube page and they can help you out there and then also also, let me know if you want more of like a beginner's guide to Pro Tools quick commands because I can definitely do that as well if there's a demand to it. And also be sure to subscribe. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button. It really does go a long way and it really helps the channel grow. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel right here so you can catch the latest tutorials on mixing, mastering, and production. And you can check out some of our suggested videos here, here, and here. And of course, if you're looking for premium loops and samples, you can find that at soundoracle.net. We got plenty to choose from.